Hi, it's Angelo here of Lambros Realty. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to do a quick video. Well, when I say quick, it probably is going to go for around 10 minutes. So basically the crux of this, this video is, I'm sure as you're all seeing at the moment, there's talk of the property market, um, you know, the, the correction and where it's heading, all negative media. And um, I guess trying to sort of shed some light and perspective on things. I'm not for one second suggesting I know what's going to happen or what the future holds. Uh, nobody does. But uh, I guess just giving you a bit of background knowledge on what it's like in Cherrybrook um, as a suburb, looking at the historical data. So whether you're a seller or a buyer, um, to make an educated decision or an investor on uh, it, for that matter, an educated decision on, on what you should do and um, sort of where the suburb sits in amongst uh, all this mass hysteria. Um, you know, is, is there likely to be a significant correction? What do historical trends show us? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to revert to the share screen uh, just quickly. So just bear with me. I've, I've pulled up the data from, um, uh, here we go. Okay. So I hope you can all see that. That's the sales and growth chart for Cherrybrook. Um, obviously over here, there's all the sales volumes um, over the years. You'll notice a high volume of um, sales. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, um, Cherrybrook, a lot of the development had begun in the in the 80s. People had moved in and really had taken off in the 90s. Um, so you'll see high sales volumes number numbers there. And then uh, it, it started, you know, when it sort of hit the mid uh, mid 2000s, it had stabilized and back to normality. So you were sort of hitting that 200s and whatnot. So I guess the first thing I want to illustrate here is if we look at the most recent um, the, the the most recent correction we've had, okay, and uh, I'll draw your attention to the May twenty seven federal budget where APRA had intervened to tighten uh, lending restrictions. Um, before obviously affordability had gone through the roof. Um, sorry, the cost of living. Sorry, in proportion to house prices, not too dissimilar to where we sit now. Um, and you know, it, it seems to be a common trend that this time it's different. There's uh, inflation's worse, whatnot. Um, you know, the the economy. When you look at the the Russia Ukraine crisis, the 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 wheat, the oil, all those um, you know supply issues. I guess that are, and I guess they're things that um, you know us on ground level will never know for sure as to what's going to happen. But if one thing stands true, um, things always seem to, to balance. And you've got to look at a property market um, individually and, and understand what's happening in that property market. So, you know, is, is Cherrybrook going to crash, right? Is it, uh, I mean, you know, I think if it was going to crash, I think you'd find this, you know, as a buyer, um, if you're honestly taking that view, you're not going to put your, your money in such a market because um, you're essentially throwing it down the drain, right? But so we'll look at going back to what I was saying, you'll notice here that even though at that point in time, there were record low interest rates, right? So from that 2017, 2018, 2019 period, sitting at 1.5% remain unchanged. You'll notice that there was still a correction here. So interest rates themselves weren't enough to, you know, keep things move to keep things moving along and and to be honest you can't expect things to move along all the time then there needs to be balance people need to transact um you know you'll find that when uh, corrections like this happen people like to take advantage of upsizing and you know looking at, at, at better homes at, at better suit them for financial reasons and i've done a i've done a video on that so i won't go into detail um you know uh, i'll obviously post a link into the youtube description section but just what I wanted to illustrate here is if you look at the growth uh, prior to that actual correction took place, right? So there was a 6.6% .6 correction, which was quite stable in the grand scheme of things. And which, which sort of, uh, again, I wanna draw your attention to the sales volumes. The sales volumes were relatively low. So in particular in 2018, when the market was correcting, majority of Cherrybrook homeowners were sitting here going, well, you know what, we'll just stay put until things pick up again, because, you know, inevitably they do. Nobody knows when or how long, but they do. Now, just to, I guess, to clarify that, you that statistically speaking in Cherrybrook, 40% of homes are owned outright, where the, uh, the other 14% uh, investment properties and the remainder are uh, you know, uh, people that have mortgage, they've still got mortgage on paying their mortgage off, right? Um, now, what, what you'll find is because it, 
on average, there's a high household income amongst residents here. And particularly those that are carrying investment rental properties, they particularly in this market now don't want to let it go due to the high yield they're yielding. Um, you know, there's, there's been a, a surge in, you know, on average anywhere between sort of eight to 12% in, uh, you know, the asking rents around here because of the shortage of, of rental properties only being sort of 14%. So this is where you'll find that, that there's always been a bit of a, uh, there's been a buffer, right? So the, again, over here, you'll notice in 2021, 200 homes had sold, um, people taking advantage of the, the booming market conditions. Um, and the way things are trending at the moment, now this only says 20, not accurate, um, because obviously the registered sales haven't gone through the office of state revenue yet, waiting for the settlement to occur. So, you know, I'd be more inclined to think that that number would be at least double, um, probably, you know, 50 being more realistic. Um, so I think, you know, looking at the way things are trending uh, with, you know, looking at this figure of an average 10 homes uh, selling per month, you know, this is going to take us to 120, I would estimate, uh, you know, as far as sales volumes are concerned, realistically, I think that's going to be more around 160 ish um, to 170 by the time the year's out, which again, will will cushion the which will cushion the correction there. So again, what you'll notice here is 2019, the 185 sales that, that took place was a result of after the federal election, consumer confidence had re-emerged and the market started to pick up again, um, which was the back. So, you know, in 2020, it, it, it essentially nullified what happened the previous two years. Um, and then it took off again. So I guess where we sort of sit here at the moment, if you look at the, uh, you look at the graph, you'll notice that you look at median sale price in comparison to sales volumes, the, this clearly shows that, you know, those that live in Cherrybrook, they're not in a position of financial hardship. Um, not saying all of them. I mean, everybody's different. There's, there's always going to be those, unfortunately. Um, but what you'll find is the vast majority um, are sort of sitting here going, all right, well, if we're not getting the price we want or we can't find what we're looking for, we're just going to play it slow. So the, the thing you've got to remember is it's predominantly a baby, baby boomer suburb where um, a lot of those that had sort of migrated and built their homes in the 80s, 90s have, have paid off their homes. Um, obviously, those that have moved in uh, a, a very good average income households. So for a property market or correction crash to happen in and around Cherrybrook, um, that would suggest that, you know, that there's no, um, just going back to what I was saying, a very low proportion of people that own outright and those that obviously are holding on to their investment uh, properties at the moment are reaping the rewards. So this sort of stands true in the sales volumes. If the sales volumes had shown that the there was an increase when there was a curve, when the market was correcting, well then that would very much suggest that the likely decrease in the median sale price would, would be a lot higher. Um, and as you see here, the sales volumes, it was quite, due to the high sales volumes, it was quite um, quite even, I guess, if you look at the way that the growth charts were happening. Then as this is where you'll start to notice the kick and things really looking at taking, look at the gap that's that's bridged here, right? So it's easy to look at that and go, wow, well, look at, you know, sort of look at the debt levels or uh, look how fast it's gone up. But you've really got to understand the background of what's happening in the average Terrybrook household. So I guess to put it simply, you know, if you're a seller, don't be too disillusioned by what's going on at the moment. Um, you know, I, th I think it's in your best interest to, sorry, let me just put it back on full screen. I hope that's sort of, um, okay, here we are again. Yeah, so I hope that sort of outlined things for you. Um, I'll just make sure on my notes that I've talked about what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. So yeah, just to give you a bit of background on the on the data here in Cherrybrook, so you can make an educated decision, you know, are you buying into a market that's likely to crash? Um, again, I'm, I'm not, the, don't look at this as advice and gospel. I'm, I'm just putting an opinion out there based on historical trends. Um, but there's nothing in the past to suggest that you know, that there's going to be a significant or drastic correction where we're talking, you know, the scope of 10 plus percent um, or a property crash. I mean, 
when you, you look at it, and I'm sure a lot of the homeowners here in Cherrybrook would uh, support what I'm saying, they're going to sit here and, and their stance is going to be, well, you know what, things are very unstable at the moment, we'll hold off. So those that are looking to sell are obviously probably in a position that need to do so. They're going to, um, they're looking at their changeover price. So yeah, just wanted to do a short video to give you a bit of uh, market insight into the background of Cherrybrook. So if you're selling, you know, what do you base your decision on? Um, you know, is it perhaps best to renovate, stay put and then sell when things pick up again? Um, you know, if you're a buyer, is buying now the right thing to do? Is waiting the right thing to do? How long do you wait? Um, so I guess it's just putting that data for you to pass your own judgment. So I hope that's helped. If any of you have any further questions, contact details are just there. And as you know, happy to help Angela of Lambros Realty. Bye for now.